What an interesting way to do the show. Uh, Stock Nerds and Market Lovers, second show of 2020. No, his first show of 2022. This is not the uh, second show. We did an end of year show, first show of 2022. And there has been, uh, on the campus to which we office out of, uh, we're pretty sure there's been an outbreak of the coronavirus. So we're all remote uh, now doing the show. I can't see uh, the fellow. I think I can see the fellows, but I just see me right now. Uh, Zach is a master. Zach's our producer. He's a master at getting us set up. Uh, we're all remote. And um, I can actually hear my echo, Zach, <laughs> when we're, as we're taping this, but I can press on. Uh, I hear voices in my head all the time, so I think mm. we're all right. I, <laughs> voices are, that's all right, man. You should uh, get that yeah, checked out, right. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should absolutely do that. So here's the thing. Market's going down right now. I want to talk about that. You should always know where you're in time and space. A cynic might uh, might think that the market's going down because the Fed's not in there to backstop them, but it's not the way you think. Richard Clarendon isn't allowed to buy stocks anymore. And all his little Fed friends. Did you see the story, uh, Danny, uh, just a couple of days ago? Uh, Clarina was trading in and out uh, at the end of February of different stock funds. And so, um, man, the, I don't know why the rules weren't on the books. Not really what's doing. It has a really bad taste. He won't go to prison for it. But, they're, they're, I mean, the, he's a retirement age. You, there's a whole thing. Like, the whole industry is beat, uh, you know. Uh, takes a stance that as you get closer to retirement age, you take less risk off the table. I don't know how rich, how old. Can someone tell me how old Richard Clarina is? Richard Clarina is uh, probably 71 by looking at him. Uh, no reason that he had to be more aggressive going into uh, March of 2020 like he uh, positioned himself to be. So take that uh, as you want. But real quick. 64. About, just no, in. Well, he did, he did because they were about to announce a lot of stimulus, you know, so. Yeah, take advantage. Yeah, sixty four. Yeah, and he should probably spend the next ten years. Like he had information that no other American had, uh, other than the other uh, Fed board members. That's insider trading. The, the, they lock does up the same thing for too. Years. Yeah. Uh, I know, and and it, and it's just I, we've done that show. I don't want to do that show. I want to get to where we're at in hmm. time and space here with the markets because um, we're. I, I think it's really important to understand this. And if you see me looking straight ahead, it's because the camera's off to my right. My charts are right in front of me here. So I apologize if it looks weird, but I wanna show you something, uh, what's happening with markets. Markets are acting exactly the way they're supposed to be acting. I'm gonna show you the one chart that will tell you when this whole thing's about to fall apart. But I need to start here because S&Ps, someone might go, well, the red line, Tim, of course, is your 50 day simple moving average. The market stopped right there. Yeah, they did, but I think some uh, more interesting is on the ATR charts. And what I always find interesting is markets tend to change when they get below this minus one ATR. And you can see we dipped below here, but we found it looks like support here previously back in the end of November, beginning of December, and then markets went up it come down and back up. We have an eclipsed minus one. This is a normal market. And like Tim, tell me more. And I was like, sure, man, I'd love to show you more. So here's the NQs. The NQs are the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 futures. And so let me get that off of there. So you are, you are absolutely below minus one ATR, which is this line here. But my friends, you're absolutely where you should be in time and space because on a weekly chart, this is actually a low risk entry point. And it's the 21. And when markets, you can see markets back here uh, in the fall, caught themselves at the 21, caught ourselves at the 21 here in December. And now we're starting to try to find support here at the 21 again. That's a really big deal, okay? And so understanding that will, will help you immensely, meaning is this the time to get wicked short? No, I don't, I don't think it is. By the way, everything we do here is uh, for edification purposes only, never to be misconstrued as advice. But Going back in, in history here, you can, you know, and you can go back further in history. When uh, when the bow breaks, so to speak, is when you break that weekly 21. And you can see going all the way back here to the beginning of 2021, back in March, you've held serve at the 21. You're holding serve at the 21 again. And so uh, if you're extremely bearish on the markets, like the jobs report came out, it wasn't a great jobs report. Someone might cite, uh, the low numbers uh, for the jobs report, number of jobs created. I think what's more important to understand here with the jobs report is the increase in earnings, 0.06% in hourly earnings increase. Someone might say, Tim, that what, what big deal is that? 
it's inflationary. That is a direct cost to the business owner, whether it's a huge megacorp or smallbusiness.com. And either way, they're not absorbing that blow. They're going to pass it on to you, the consumer. So the same amount of goods and services uh, are going to cost more than they did maybe the previous month or previous quarter. Someone might say, well, there's other ways to contend with that. Uh, you could make smaller package sizing. Like if you're like, like in the Frosted Flakes, instead of a 24-ounce box, you'll get like an 18-ounce box and they can keep the price the same. You're getting less product. The bottom line is this is not going to absorb this. They're going to pass it on to you. Inflation is a tax. And so you, you've got something that once you increase wages, there's no turning back. It's like the ultimate government program, right? And I'm pro wage increase. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But that is not going to be absorbed by people. It's, it's added cost of doing business, okay? And so you need, uh, that is what drives future earnings here. And the, the stocks that work are going to pass it on. You know, you got to build a building, you got to build a building, cement's going to cost more, but you need cement. But do you need the extra package from, uh, and I'm making this up, uh, do you need the extra uh, CRM package? This is a weekly chart of CRM. Uh, upstart is uh, financing. You know, do you, will people be financing more if they're paying more for the normal goods and services? Uh, let's look at Dash. Uh, these are all weekly charts, by the way. So they look like death and destruction, of course, on the dailies. Uh, yeah, like, are they going to DoorDash? Like, Door, DoorDash, uh, if you look at statistics, has a habit of increasing your food bill anywhere from 75 to 100%. So is the, uh, is the, the $6 cheeseburger meal at McDonald's really worth 12 to 15 bucks? No, it's not. And so with tip, right, if you decide to tip. And so, um, yeah, I think you're going to see a bunch of things struggle here. But there's a chart, my friends. There's a chart. Hmm. That we should all be looking at. So let me switch this back to dailies. So when we're talking dailies here, I want to show you um, like where the NASDAQ is on, you know, with moving averages. Like, it's almost no man's land, right? And like the 200 is all the way down here, but yet we found support here. And it's like, why is it finding support there? And it goes back to weekly charts, right? By the way, before I show you the one chart you need to be watching, I'm going to show you the weekly S&Ps. This is aggressive. So I said the 21 is low risk when I was looking at the NASDAQ weeklies. This is um, aggressive. Well, Tim, why is that aggressive? It's the eight period. You see this dotted line here, friends? The eight period. And the eight period is an aggressive entry, but you can see the markets here this week in particular are finding support. Are they ready to fall apart? That's kind of what we want to address right now. And I think there's a chart that you're going to want to really, really look at and study and understand. Let's look at ZB or ZN. Let's look at ZN. 10-year notes. 10-year notes have gotten destroyed. Now, Danny, uh, I get dyslexia when I start talking about this stuff. So uh, get your Tim Interpreter warmed up, tuned up, and uh, get ready to explain everything that I potentially will get backwards. Uh, so here are the 10-year notes. And you can see they've sold off. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This was the shot across the bow, okay? This was the interest rates going higher, right? TNX, uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a second. The TNX just shooting higher, and that took interest-sensitive stocks or future earnings-type stocks down with the ship. And you can see that we've just precipitously pulled back, which means interest rates have continuously moved higher. If this chart, now we're going to look here. We're going to go back because we just did it. I want to look on the weekly. If this chart, see how it's probing the lows? If it takes out, go back here. It starts, it's finding support right here. Okay, and I'm going to show you an ATR chart. This is a really big deal. We're in a weekly chart. And it just took out the 20, where it, it took out the 2021 lows. Or yeah, took out the 2021 lows. And now we're right here. In this, uh, we found uh, we found support and hope when the uh, when the uh, vaccines were introduced late uh, 2020. But let's look at the ATR chart. So we're on ZN. We're going to switch this to a weekly. And where are we? Yeah, we're look at this. We're coming down to three ATR. This is a really big deal. If this chart starts taking out this zone of support, it's my my belief. And by the way. 
Alex doesn't have to agree. Hunter doesn't have to agree. Dan doesn't have to agree. I reserve the right to be wrong. But if we start taking out these lows, interest rates are going to really, really spike. I'll show you that chart here in a second. And now you find yourself in a situation where you have potentially little growth and higher rates and inflation. And so, well, Tim, what are you talking about? A little growth. Just find, find yourself the current GDP number, right? Gross domestic product. We have pumped a gazillion, which is a number, uh, of, of your tax dollars and, and your kids' tax dollars and their kids' tax dollars to prop up the economy and get this GDP high. And all we got is like 2.1 to 2.3% GDP. This is not good. And so if you have interest rates going higher and potentially growth slowing, well, you'll probably do a good job of taking inflation off the table, right, Danny? But what you'll have is then a Fed-induced mini recession, the Diet Coke recession, because all you're hearing right now is the economy's humming on all cylinders. The market's a forward-looking vehicle. I think this chart is a big deal. Danny, I'll let you clear all this up in one second. Let me just show you this last chart here of TNX. So this is a weekly chart of TNX. We have now, we consolidated at the mean. We're at plus two ATR. And it's my belief that we're probably coming up here to that plus three ATR. Notice yesterday, I'll take this down to a daily. Notice the market didn't fall apart on Thursday. Just kind of zeroed out waiting for this jobs report information. And look at look at what uh, TNX did. Yeah, market, you know, it, it didn't fall apart. It didn't zoom higher. It was buoyant. Now you're up 3.4% on 10 years, right? This is a huge move. Like the move, here, let's just look. The move from this week, here, this, uh, excuse me, the move this week, this is this week, I'm on a week, I'm on a day of a chart, pardon me. Right here is Monday, 1-3. You're up 16%. 16%. Do you, do, you, do you think that's going to slow mortgage refinancing? Do you think that's going to slow car buying, car financing? Potentially. Let's look at it. So when you see the pause here and the reacceleration and you're up 3.4%, like when look at what the NASDAQ's doing. What are the rate sensitive stocks doing? Yeah, they're down again. They're down three quarters of a percent. What's the S&P's doing? not down that much and they're finding support where they should because there's more um, less 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 rate sensitive stocks in that S&P 500 per se than there are on that NASDAQ 100 but there's a lot to unpack there I don't want to give Danny a chance to in fact unpack hey, it. oh Tim, Danny and I yeah, can I make ahead, a man. quick interjection here I just uh will you pull up TLT I, I just wanted to highlight a little bit of uh technical analysis sure. here on TLT yeah. if just pull it up on a on a daily is fine um mm. There's actually, I guess I, you could say roughly the last six months or so, there's been a base that's formed in TLT. And just like Tim was talking about kind of where we're at right now on the lows, well, basically that translates to 141 or 140-ish on TLT. And you can look on the left-hand side of the chart right there on Tim's, and you see where there was some resistance back in April, May-ish around 141 that it ultimately cleared through. And then in October, we saw that 141 area offer or operate as support. So Tim is right. This 141 area, very important for TLT, obviously for TNX getting through that 17 point or 1.765 high today and breaking out was really big too. So very, very important Huge. for markets uh, to watch how these play out. That's a great point. Now, Danny, before we get into it, I got to show you this. So I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, Danny knows I drink a lot of coffee. Danny, I have five ways to make coffee right now at the house i've got uh the regular coffee maker i've got the aeropress i've got the keurig i've got the french press and i've got the aeropress okay wow. oh look at don i see don don is happy by this news but <laughs> look at this danny panera is my sixth way to make coffee and so i didn't realize how much coffee i truly drink look at this 182 cups at panera Good for Lord. that coffee subscription? <laughs> right. I had no idea I went into Panera that much to go get coffee. Did Zach, was that Zach with the good Lord? Yeah, that's me. I'm sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> ah, that's so awesome. That's awesome. Look at that. You saved four hundred and thirty-eight dollars on your Panera Bread subscription. Show not sponsored by well, Panera Bread, by retail. the way. It's full retail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is just a glowing. But, it's but, nine but, but bucks I, a month. I, I will. I will say this: the way that Tim drinks coffee, he is a loss later for them. They they figure people like, <laughs> nine, they'll kind of lose. You it's know, nine their, bucks a month. Yeah, they'll 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 go buy it's like good. a couple times a week, and then maybe once yeah. uh, a couple a year. times a month, and then just a few times. I know Tim goes every day. Oh, well, yeah, it's on my way to go pick up the kids. It's on my like it's super convenient. And I it keep thinking, like, you drive out of here, seven man, you feel good. <laughs> That's true. true. Seven Eleven should do this. You know, Burger King tried it, and it was a huge failure. Like they couldn't get people to come in. They they, they canceled it. One, it was not good coffee, and two, it's Burger King, right? Burger King's gross. Uh, I know. But Panera, man. Uh, oh, you like the Burger King? I do not. I, look, that, care those for the flame grill patties think... are the whole game. You either like them or you don't. If you like ah, flame grilled, yeah, you're just... fine. If not, I it's like not I like Burger King. I, I yeah. rarely eat fast food. Yeah. But... I, when I do, I, I rarely eat fast food, but when I do, I do Burger King. That's good stuff. <laughs> That's horrible. Right. Right? I'm, I'm not a Burger King fan, personally. Not no, not anti Burger King. I'm not anti. I just feel like it's garbage. Does that make me anti? Like, well, what well, is it's the good all garbage? Food? In a way, garbage. Hey, yeah, you're eating a landfill. <laughs> <laughs> Like Chick Fil A, I don't feel is garbage. It's probably no. no Chick Fil A is right? good. I like Chick Fil A is good, efficient. Ooh, like yeah. Amen. You know what? Cleanliness of the restaurant matters to me as well, and so uh, that goes into it. I, uh, some dirty Burger Kings out there, man. That's true. Well, so, yeah, no, that's uh, luck. Some are clean, some are dirty. All Chick Fil A's are clean, man. They mm. they've got their the, the Chick Fil A model. Yeah, man. You can only right. have one, right? Like one or two potentially, and. That whole model of the owner operated model, not the conglomerate operated model, which the Burger Kings, the Wendy's, the Kentucky Fried Chickens, all those are conglomerate. Whereas uh, it's individual families typically that own a Chick Fil A. It's a really interesting model. You can see it shine through. Um, oh, and they're grateful anyway, to get. Those, I digress. They're grateful to get those franchises, man. They're bit, They're grateful to get yeah. those franchises, and they take the stores clean. And- Chick Fil A is crazy. I heard those. All right, videos. Danny. What did what you see? Don holding up the sorry. trophy for Chick Fil A. There it is. <laughs> Happy to be here. Is he the champion chicken eater, Don Vandenborg. Um, let's see, Danny. Cut, uh, clean up what I uh, what I talked about, or make it a little more clear for coffee, me. fast food, or the bonds. The, oh, let's go. Let's go. Bonds, <laughs> interest rates. Door number three, and, Alex. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, well, so you, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, when interest rates rise, uh, uh, it slows down the economy. It makes things more expensive. Borrowing costs become more expensive. Certain deals don't work. And think of it very simply, when your mortgage, when you're refinancing your mortgage or you're buying a house, if you've got a higher rate, it makes your interest payments. Because remember, a lot of that, if you do a 30-year mortgage, man, easily half of those payments over the life of that mortgage is, is to interest. And so if all of a sudden interest rates rise, that really puts your your payment much higher. And that's the same thing with companies or anything. And so interest rates are a way to slow down the economy. Um, Now, I will say I've got an interesting take that might be a little bit different. I mean, that's the consensus. That's what Tim's talking about, you know, economic theory. You lower rates, try to stimulate, you raise rates to try to, you know, slow down or tighten. Now, the Fed's historically mm-hmm. always s- s- tried to to stimulate and, 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 and put juice in the punch bowl, but they're always too slow to tighten and slow the economy down when it's hitting on all cylinders. And that's the problem. You get way too much stimulus, but never kind of enough tightening. And that's why if they would let the economy self-regulate its own cycle, the interest rates most likely would be more stable and you wouldn't get these boom and bust cycles. But that said, I've got an interesting theory, Tim, that I'd like you to think about. What if, what, first of all, you have inflation. So they were getting a lot of flack for that. So they kind of were getting in a position where they had to look like there was a parent at home. So they had to talk about raising rates, but the, but inflation was slowing down the economy because it was costing consumers more they were buying less units, less individual products, 
because they couldn't afford as much. So inflation will right. high enough inflation. Remember, the Fed's target rate is 2%. Ooh, 2% inflation is good, which is actually a fallacy. That's wrong. But if you accept their premise that 2% in target inflation is good, it got way, the horse got way out of the barn. Inflation's 8%, and the Fed missed their, overshot their target by 80%. So they obviously don't know what they're doing. Okay. But once you get high enough inflation, it actually is a deal killer. It kills deals. Companies cannot pass on that much inflation to the consumers. It hurts their bottom line. It hurts profits. So mo not all companies are energy. There are few sectors that are inflation. Inflation is pretty good for those particular sectors. But for the most of the economy, that's going to slow it down. So the economy was already slowing. Now, so here's what I'm at. Here's my question. What if the Fed's excuse for this tightening and this, they, they wanted was the inflation and the overheating economy, and they wanted to tighten because they see the data much better than everybody else. They get to see this data early, and the numbers were actually showing that the economy was slowing. And their, quote, projected GDP numbers weren't going to be hit. They were going to miss the mark. And so if all of a sudden all these numbers in a month or two come out and it should, and the Fed didn't tighten, didn't do something to give them ground cover, then what you're saying, Tim, is, wait a minute, you're, you're spending trillions of funny money. You're keeping rates artificially low. And now the growth is like coming to a halt, grinding halt. Mm -hmm. So they really needed to have an excuse for the economy slowing, which it already was doing. So what if, what if they raised rates just for cover because the economy was slowing? Because if the economy was slowing and they hadn't done anything and they had left everything easy peasy, greasing the wheels, then it looks again right. like they, they don't have control. They didn't control inflation. And now their stimulus didn't really work for growth. It worked for a few, you know, a couple months, six months, but now it's it's run its course. So they really were in a, in a pickle. So I think there were two reasons they had to raise rates. One, to kind of curb inflation, but two, try to cover for the numbers, the growth numbers that were about to be released. Uh, that's uh, very well could be. Real quick, Zach, I just realized uh, something on the screen. Yeah. I never get to see the screens when I'm in the studio. <laughs> There's a Revere bug in the bottom. Uh, I don't know if it's on the left or the right hand. It's on my right hand side of the screen. Is that new? Uh, yeah, I added that a while ago. Um, yeah, that's overlaid that's on everything. That's pretty awesome. A little dude. watermark down there looking fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, Zach is, uh, I'm telling you, if anyone uh, does uh, podcasting and wants a professional, uh, Zach is the go to, no matter where you're at in the world. Like we're doing this all remote right now. And it still looks and sounds amazing, but this he is what actually Zach went did to a for the he actually went to a professional broadcasting school, not the Connecticut upstairs <laughs> school, school of broadcasting. Yeah, I, like you, you know, you, you, <laughs> you throw you throw that in my face, but it's what, it's what you can afford when you can afford it. Yeah, this is Zach. Show my screen, brother. Good this Lord. was one of the best ever. I'm sitting watching New Year's Eve, flipping through the channels with the kids. And I came across um, uh, Anderson Cooper and um, who's Andy Cohen. And I'm like, Andy oh, Cohen. God, Zach's a genius. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that is so spot on. I can't like, believe that, how well you blended into Anderson Cooper's face. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I could be a stunt double, right? Like, does Anderson yeah. Cooper do risky things? Or does he works. need a coffee drinker? Like, does Anderson Cooper need a stand-in to just drink coffee? I would do that all day long. For stand sure. around, drink coffee. Yeah, hang out. And Andy Cohen, uh, drunk Andy Cohen is funny. I don't know if Good you guys Lord, saw they let him go though. off this year, man. Yeah, yeah, they did. That was hilarious. So anyway, um, but this pod, this podcast, by the way, is a trading plan for 2022. A lot of good stuff in there. By the way, anything that you hear on the show, stock nerds, market lovers. Hey you Tim, I have something you want to, to add go deeper to the uh, interest rate yeah, stuff. Go ahead, man. <clears throat> yeah. So millennials today only have, own five percent of the uh, wealth in the country. Um, at the same time, boomers at the same age own 21%. So what's happening too is uh, people my age, let's say, I'm 31, um, are having trouble buying homes because one, they don't have the savings. And two, they're being locked out because homeowners aren't selling because they had previous locked rates. Real estate's going up because of the inflation. 
So you kind of put into a situation where they're going to keep renting and renting prices are skyrocketing, at least here in the Valley in Arizona. Yep. We call it the Valley here. Um, yeah. it, you know, you're, you're in a really bad spot if you're not making enough money. Um, there's kind of like, it's like a double edged sword. You know, what do you do? Right. Um, well, and it's well, not only find out. There's one, there's one more thing that adds to that is you've got these big pooled real estate funds or investing funds that are looking for, you know, inflate to protect against inflation, but looking for other alternatives besides stocks and cash. And so you've got, and, and there's overseas funds that, you know, the overseas markets have been in trouble. They have, have been done much worse than the U.S. stock market. Right. People don't realize that. you got a lot of Asian money. you got a lot of overseas money that's coming up and gobbling up houses, and they're buying houses 100 at once. And they're not- uh, Let me ask you a question, price. Dan. They're, they're, they're buying full retail. What do you think, what's going to happen to all that money? That So the boomer generation, when that day comes and they pass, and that money goes to their kids or what have you, their beneficiaries, do, is our generation going to, I just don't see the responsibility factor there on what they're going to do. Because if they're not saving now and you give them, let's say a million dollars, are they going to be responsible with it? Or is it just going to create more of, it's going to be more fuel to the fire? I know it's that's not, you can't point. answer that's that question. That's a good point. They should call me and we'll help them with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> but, but some will be spend thrift. Some will put it away. It also depends on how the parents structured it. Because if they talk to me, we can structure it to help have spend thrift clauses to make sure that it's kind of doled out on a kind mm -hmm. of, you know, periodic basis instead of just getting it as a lump sum. Yeah. So it's interesting that you guys are talking. I was scrolling through. Uh, look at these. Uh, look at the banks today. Just um, have. Let me see. Goldman Sachs not really a bank. Not not as good. But look at even even Wells Fargo, the worst of the worst, right? Um, man, just just having themselves a day. And all this, by the way, uh, started coming about. I don't know if this is it. This is. There's a screen. Man, I made this available. I I, I talked about it last week. I sent this to a bunch of people and all these banking and finance stocks were showing up in this weekly uh, moving average stack screen, uh, obviously before the new year started. And just look at, look at the, they're, they're all, this is, this is the leadership right now. And so is it going to go on forever? Is it going to revert? Yeah, it'll revert. Um, you gotta, you know, you don't want to buy extended, but like WFC is clearly here at three HR. Do you want to start buying WFC here at three HR? Uh, I think if you go back in this chart uh, through history, you'll see third ATR is typically a pausing point, and uh, it doesn't have to go all the way back down to the bottom of the range here, but you'll probably get a better entry. Um, but today is absolutely bank's days, and it's not uh, per se uh, Netflix's day, you know, because uh, that inflation, you pay people more, takes away from quote unquote future earnings. So it's super interesting. Danny. Danny sent an article over the transom. Uh, I don't know if it was yesterday. I don't know if it was today, but uh, it's about Kathy Wood. And everyone was taking Danny. Danny wasn't taking shots at Kathy Wood, but it, it, the thing that popped out to me uh, about Arc, right? And you can say the same thing. Like Arc uh, year to date, I believe, is down about eleven percent. FFTY, uh, FFTY is the IBD fifty. Um, growth ETF per se. It's not run by IBD, it's run by an outside firm. I think it's down 7% for the year. And so something that really strikes me that I I think stock nerds and market lovers really need to understand that uh, instead of becoming an ardent champion of whatever Kathy Wood's doing, or an ardent champion, even of what Bill O'Neill, like, you know, this, this ETF that's not run by IBD, it just comes off the IBD 50. Like the beauty of being an individual investor is so powerful and it shows up here, right? Like it's, it, it, let's say that you trade off the weekly charts and we'll get uh, the weekly up here. You know, if when's the last time the NASDAQ came down to the 21? Yeah, it, on, it was just a little while ago. Like if you, whatever your stop is, daily chart, weekly chart, whatever you're trading off of, even smaller time frame, like you can get out. You, by the way, you can rotate. 
Like you, you're not stuck in some ideology. You're not stuck just constantly buying. I mean, how much of, um, have you guys seen this? How much of Robin Hood does Kathy Woods own? It's a ton. Like is she, she's like one of the biggest shareholders of Robin Hood. And from high to low, tip to stern, you're down 82 and a half percent. I mean, come on, this is nuts. You don't have to do any of that. Let's say you believe in Robin Hood, right? But you've got, you, you can stop yourself out. You can do a bunch of things. Like, you know, I bought Robin Hood here at the weekly, close below the, the weekly 21, excuse me, 21 exponential on a weekly, I'm out. Like you can buy here, low risk entry. And then once it starts closing below it, just get out. Give me another one, uh, Hunter. I know you've got a ton of these type of hoodie names. Like, um, what is- uh, Pass, is that's a good one. Exchange? Uh, SI is one that recently got hit, but it's, I would look at like HUT or MARA. The miners have gotten hit a oh, lot worse than crypto has. Hey, what is the one that is owned by the eccentric, uh, CEO, Mr. MSTR? MSTR. Yeah. Look at, look at this from, from, from high here. Just, this is, oh, hold on. I gotta do it the other way. About no, 50% this isn't even high. Rounding. No, no. Last year. Uh, uh, at the beginning okay. of the year, thirteen fifteen, sixty four percent. That's a little worse than fifty percent. Yeah, <laughs> like like if if you believe in something, like you believe in crypto, you believe in um, Tesla, you believe whatever it is you believe in. There's still a better way to trade it with the trend, and then you can get right back into your favorite thing the moment uh, it starts to show an up an uptick. But to think that you got to buy this because this guy owns a gazillion dollars of Bitcoin and it's the next biggest thing. And then you got to ride all this down. You don't, like you have a choice, like ARKK. Kathy Woods isn't going to start buying Nucor in this fund. I know she's got a couple different funds, but she's not going to start buying Nucor here. She's not going to start buying the banks. She's locked into an ideology as put forth in, in her documents and, and she's got to put money to work. Probably is that, a week, is that a weekly right there? That's a weekly, man. Can you do a daily? I'm just curious what she is. I think it's more than, I want to see what it is year to date. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get you daily and year to date. I'll do it with you live. So here well, I know is, she's a cool, at the lows, she was a cool 50% down for the year. So at the lows, it is a 80, cool 50%. 82. Yeah, She's she down 13, over, over 13% just for 2022. Roy, right. what is today? The 6th? Uh, the set, right. So, actually, six or seven. so you know that. So you know that that quote infamous that anti arc fund, the total capital short innovation ETF. It's SARC. I didn't know. So that. Like short arc. Oh, it is. It's it's the oh. ticker is SARC. Oh, S A R K. Short arc, and it jumped seven point five percent in one day. The best day it has. Now it's a new fund, but it basically he's shorting Kathy Wood. And, and look, here's the whole point. A, a year ago, Kathy Wood was a darling of Wall Street. It was growth was technology was in. It was a place to be. Now that tech stocks and innovation and growth are out, it's dumpster fire. So you, that's why you got to be flexible. When 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 Kathy Wood, uh, uh, I mean, when technology and innovation start coming into favor again, which may be two days, two months, two years. Kathy Woods Arc Fund would be a great place to be, and that Sark will be dumpster fire. But that's why you got to be flexible in your mind and be able to shift depending on what the market. That, that's the whole point right here, and I think it's the. It really is. I know I was talking about FFTY, but it's really the power. Like anyone who follows uh, IBD or Investors Business Daily, like you'll be cycled into understanding who the leadership is just by the top fundamental and technical stocks. That's why that approach works. Seventy percent fundamental about uh 30 percent technical you'll you'll get bubbled into what's working so you can let go of your ideology like you could be a complete crypto or a complete whatever you you consider yourself geek out on it all you want but at the end of the day is it about you know it's about making money right it's it, it's not about being uh so levered to one thing that you lose your mind and like right now gamestop is in the news you know they they hired the uh, 20 people to do uh, crypto. NFT it, marketplace? It, after <laughs> hours. Yeah, like 20 people for a marketplace, right? Anyway, it was up 30% last night after hours. And it, you can see now it's up about four, four and three quarters. But, the, the, you know, 
you can believe in it all you want, but even, I mean, obviously that's a huge peak from last year, but even just go recently to November, 243 down to 137 is what? It's down 36%. Like believe in it all you want, right? Like, um, by the way, I did go to the movies uh, recently and um, I am not a fan of AMC's popcorn. Just going to throw that out there right now. I'm not <laughs> saying that's why the stock is why? so uh, horrible, but I've had... It was, it was not honest. Uh, I'll give you a review here. So I got a choice of Cinemark and I got a choice of um, AMC. And okay. um, the gentleman behind the counter was super nice. Uh, the, the warmth of the popcorn, awful. Uh, and uh, it's, a ba- it's not a good experience. Like Cinemark not good is good to have stale hard. cold it, popcorn. Well, that... You, <laughs> You know, shocker. Um, <laughs> like, it's just not. A, I can't. I can't describe. Like, they had no butter. At, like the fake butter stuff out for the popcorn. Um, yep. It felt dirty. Uh, and it, it, it just it felt like Cinemark seems to have uh, figured this out more than AMC. Uh, Cinemark felt so. So, so dirty AMC and, is like your Burger King, and uh, the other ones your Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, like if we're doing that comparison, oh, we should do that comparison. Yeah, I would say in the pantheon of movie experiences here, uh, I'm going to go Cinemark. Uh, in fast food, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go uh, Chick Fil A. There. Uh, let's see. Um, fast casual. I don't know. Like I, I don't think Five Guys is that great of an experience. Um, although I got to tell you what, man, in and out does a good job. They put a ton of people through there going back to fast food in and out's private though. Didn't we do the Mount Rushmore? They'll never had in and out. We covered that, right? Oh yeah, we did. We did this, but in Arby's terms of cleanliness is, oh yeah. Arby's is a tough road to hoe there. Um, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean I, to take this off. You know, I, I, I think five guys though, like when you're doing fast casual, um, Panera, right? Panera is okay. No, no, and no. Then, you don't get to come in here with your Panera shill. We saw your, your coffee savings. You don't get to. <laughs> that's yeah. your bias. That's not fair. I have totally the fancy of the uh, fast foods, right? Yeah. Who is that? Chipotle. Oh my gosh! How did I forget? You guys game? get them as a sponsor, and you can talk up Panera and Chipotle all you want. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. You what, start paying a beat. You know here, what? Right? Yeah. I haven't looked. <laughs> At Chipotle, Chipotle is just look at this major earnings move back in July. Yeah, it's been struggling. And then look at this, just just finding support at that major move. It's a base. Um, I, I I contend that this is a ten thousand dollars stock the moment they introduce breakfast foods. The moment, like they, if Chipotle came in here and said, "Hey, we're going to start doing breakfast," this thing goes to what is it trading at sixteen hundred? This thing goes to four thousand. Like it's. Breakfast is such a huge part. Like, get, do you guys know what Potbelly Subs is? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Do you that. guys know what that is? Yeah. I've, I've never I, had I think it. That, isn't that more it, local to Texas, in the Dallas area, or is that everywhere? Where no, that? it's Chicago. Uh, I believe right. it's Midwest. Uh, and I only know this because I subscribe to a newsletter called The Nation's Restaurant News. Um, shocker, right? Oh, speaking of uh, me and food, so I, I'm, I'm, Danny, I felt a little under the weather uh, the last couple of days. And I said, I think it's I told Tanya, I said, I think it's because I'm not drinking. This literally just happened before I came up the stairs to tape the show with you guys. I said, Tanya, I think it's because I'm not drinking water. And she goes, well, coffee dehydrates you and you should be drinking half your body weight in water. And I looked at Tanya and go, is that a fat joke? I'd be drowning, Tanya. So <laughs> in what, a month? She's trying to kill me. <laughs> she hey, says, you should half your body weight in, in ounces in water a day. And I'm like, she's trying to kill me. Yeah, my doctor told me drink, don't drink regular water. You want to drink like the Gatorades, the powder. You want to drink stuff with electrolytes in it. So you wow. hydrate yourself. He likes, he's big on that. He wants I, the electric coffee, water. I've, I've switched over to a little tea. Anyway, Chipotle, man, it, look at this. On the 10-week moving average, the last time you got 10-week on Chipotle, not, listen, again, this show is for edification purposes only. It, this is one of my favorite stocks in the whole wide universe. I'm completely biased about it, but you don't get 10 weeks uh, often in Chipotle. And 
here we are, just holding, holding serve at the 10 week. Doesn't mean it's going to go up, just means it's holding serve at the 10 week. Probably need a little moving average stack action to get, to get it going. And with that, my friends, let's do this. Let's go to Hunter. Hunter, what you got, brother? Hey, real quick, before you go to Hunter, on a side note, you said holding serve. Guess what? Dokovic yeah. isn't going to get the whole serve in the Australian and defend his title. He is not oh, they're, that they're not going to let him in? Austra the first they said they would, and so he they gave him an exemption. Mm -hmm. He showed up, flew into uh, uh, yeah, I heard about and, that, and uh, Melbourne, and they said, nope, nope, you're staying in this 14 hotel while you appeal, and then we're going to kick you out. Danny, they you're, were you're shame decent. on them. Yeah, Danny, you're well, yeah, I mean, it's one thing if you just say no, you got to get vaxxed. It's another thing to say, yeah, that's fine, and then the they, the politicians got some heat over it, and so. Then they changed their mind once they got there. Now they're pointing fingers at who actually did it and gave them the exemption to begin with that they have revoked once he got there. For and now he doesn't have time uh, to do it. Now he doesn't. Huh? It hurts television ratings, I would think. If oh, you take, it's like with golf when yeah, when Tiger Woods, yeah. I don't. I don't. I bet you they're, getting the, so they're, they're getting a big Australia. argument with with Serbia. Serbia, the country now, is really you know, defending Dokovic, obviously, and they're getting an argument. And Australia just got in a big tiff with uh, France just a few months ago over the cancellation of a bunch of subs they were going to order. So anyway, Australia has been kind of like sandwiches, sandwich sandwiches or, no, or, like, or nuclear like underwater, devices. you know, underwater uh, Navy uh, defense, big subs, not little subs. <laughs> Foot gotcha. yeah, just wanted, to, just wanted yeah. to clear that out. Yeah. Hunter, what you got, brother? Uh, I got some, uh, I got some non-traditional stuff, and I, I talked about this a little bit Hunter, in yesterday's you, video. Is there some gray coming in over here? Is there a oh, little touch oh, there of gray? Is, to... There's plenty. Hold up, it's backwards, so I got to think of which way. Yeah, to look. yeah, wow. plenty of gray over here, and some sunshine is uh, right on my face as well. It's like the <laughs> yeah, that fifth looks good, that getting old. You. But, but it's <laughs> weird because you've got that boyish charm with the gray hair. It's like you're playing oh, an it's, old. It's the best of both worlds. Musical. <laughs> silver it's fox awesome. baby it's the only way <laughs> um, yes what you got I, so uh in last night's video i talked about some of the remaining leaders in the leadership <laughs> sectors uh that we're currently seeing which are not your normal sectors they're more of your value oriented sectors like oil financials defense stocks industrials so on and so forth so what i wanted to do and I did this last night a little bit. I'll do more of this today in the 21 over 21, you know, as usual, because we're looking for the stocks that are still acting like leaders. Uh, but I want to bring a, some of the highest quality stocks in each of those leadership sectors. And I talked about some of these last night. Uh, but Tim, if you could pull up John Deere uh, first, that would be mm -hmm. great. And I just want to show some of these moves that we're seeing in some of these areas that have been, um, you know, lagged growth significantly not only, you know, just recently in 2020, but for a while. Uh, so John Deere has had a really big gap above resistance, above the 200 day moving average. And because of that, we've also got the 50, the 21 and the eight sloping up through that 200 or at least trying to. And it, what, for all intents and purposes, it looks like that will happen. So we're seeing some of these industrial names, what defense is, what we're seeing is cheaper valuations, still attractive EPS and revenue growth and large liquid companies, right? So John Deere fits the mold perfectly there. Another one is Ford. Ford has been uh, one of the leading stocks in the market uh, really for a decent while now. I had a great year. I, I know we talked about it on the show not very long ago. Um, and Ford, and this is again with the industrials, I know it's an automaker, but we've seen automakers act pretty well recently particularly the ones that are not Tesla, some of the legacy automakers. So Ford acting really well uh, in regards to defensives. We've got LHX, which is L3 Harris, and then uh, RTX, which is Raytheon. Both of those make What is, hold on moves. a second. Uh, what, what you trying to I'm sorry, up? I was trying to pull up the Chrysler. What is Chrysler? I thought it was uh, FCA. Gosh, I can't it's remember. It's FCAU, uh, pardon me. No, is it FCA? Yeah, you're it's, right. It can't be FCAU. Yeah, it is. That's not even coming. Sure. It is? I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I, I was like, gosh, you said yeah, Chrysler, right? I'm like, I wanted to... Yeah. I don't ever trade that stock. That's probably Ford? why. Oh, crap. You're right. No, that's Florida Atlantic University. 
totally yours. So, uh, where Lane Kiffin was before he went to Ole Miss. I have a buddy of mine who was the quarterback right. there with uh, with Lane Kiffin. Said he was quite a character. Fiat Chry- this I can't should. be it. Those are bonds. Those, they, those are something bonds. on the date. They're bonds. January nineteenth, twenty twenty. Last year, what happened that day? That's weird. Now that's that. Those. Uh, it's a one for one exchange, and uh, it's probably Fiat. Uh, F I H. Let me see what Fiat comes with. F C A U. No, that's the same thing I was typing. But oh. we're not going to solve this mystery right now. What? A- yeah, that's weird. No. Hmm. All right. I'm sorry, Hunter. I threw you all well. off. I, I no, was good. looking for you're legacy good. automakers. Oh. Well, you've got the really okay. the two main ones that we're seeing. I mean, Toyota, GM, Ford, right? Oh, yeah. Seeing those, Thank you. Expect, particularly Ford because of the F-150 Lightning has garnered a lot more attention and captivation out of consumers uh, and media than GM uh, has done with any of their electric vehicles. So Ford is kicking GM's butt uh, in relation to marketing for their EVs. And I think that's reflected in their price. Uh, secondly... Yeah. RTX, LHX, those are your defense stocks. Northrop Gunman, you could also throw in here. But you can see a kind of a similar move to what we saw with Deer. A really swift move back up above uh, some overhead moving averages. So we're, these are also cheaper stocks for the most part. They have earnings, um, they have revenue, you know, and they're safer, more stable. And so we're seeing that they're also part of the industrials uh, complex as well. So on to some other sectors, transportation uh, via truck is the number seven industry group out of 190 something in IBD's uh, database. And JBHT is one of the best looking names there. Yeah. And this is a chart that still looks healthy, right? If it, uh, there you go. Just continuing to grind higher above 200. It is down a little bit today, but this trucking group has continued to hold up. Uh, transports have continued to hold up well. and Additionally, an area that really nobody talks about, chemicals are holding up well, and actually some are breaking out. Can you pull up HUN for me, uh, Tim Huntsman? This is uh, a company I'm pretty familiar with just from a lot of research over the years, Uh, but I've I've been getting 52-week high alerts uh, on HUN uh, the last couple of days. And so I wanted to bring this as one of the better looking chemical companies out there. And I will say this, there's a lot of stocks that look pretty good five days ago that have now started to succumb to the weakness of the markets as well. So this list of leadership or strength is getting narrower and narrower. And I just want to be 100% transparent about that. Uh, Last couple here, Tim. SBNY, I talked about this on last night's video. Uh, Signature Bank. This is the regional banks. Look at this move. Uh, You can see it plain as day on the chart. And most regional banks Mm -hmm. are going to look similar, Tim. KRE. WAL is another one that looks almost just like SBNY. Uh, so banks, as expected, are benefiting in a pretty significant way from the climb in yields uh, or rates. And we're also seeing the big banks, too, like JPM, uh, those types starting to repair their charts a little bit too, get back above moving averages and things of that nature. So uh, and my last ones here, I talked about these as well. DVN, uh, Devon Energy, and then Fang, Diamondback Energy, two of the top Oil and gas producers, a D. No, D, DVN, DVN. Devin, 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 thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And uh, these, what's really an interesting study to look at here on these two is look at how they performed relative to crude and also relative to their peers in the oil and gas exploration ETF. Uh, we don't have to go through all the details right now, but it, I do think it's it can be valuable, especially if you're dealing with stocks that are highly, highly dependent or reactionary to the, the commodity they trade relative to, you want to see how are they performing relative to that commodity. So for example, how is FCX performing relative to copper this year, right? It's just uh, something alternative to compare it to as opposed to like comparing FCX to the S&P 500. Um, when something's highly correlated to an underlying commodity, I like to see how it's acting relative to the commodity itself. So that's all I got. Cool, man. I thought that was great. Well, actually, uh, I'll, I'll, actually, I'd like to tag on to that, Hunter. When you're trading a like Devon or Fang, when, and, and they are highly correlated to the price of oil, a lot of times once you find your entry point you buy, you actually will want to key off of the price of the, the oil futures, not actually that chart. Yep. That sometimes you'll, your sell will come from the oil futures, not from the Devon chart itself. Well, I, I think actually Alex has some really cool insights on how we used crude 
and the futures for the oil market uh, with this most recent DBN buy. So I think he's going to actually talk about that and how you have to pay attention to the commodity. You can't just own DBN and not look at crude. It's something you, you have to be aware of. Stewart. Yeah. Oh, um, so I was watching uh, CL a couple of weeks back and I noticed that oil was hooking back up through the 200 day and it was showing a lot of strength and um, kind of under the radar. And we, we had to compile the list of leaders in the oil sector. And that's why we did get into DVN and um, MPC at the time. Uh, MPC was a little bit later, but uh, it was an, it was a good uh, trade. Um, we couldn't hold it because yesterday I was spotting that CL looked like it was kind of getting exhausted to the upside. Uh, so we, we did book that, that gain and Hunter, if I'm not mistaken, what was the, what was the gain on that, uh, DVN on DVN a little, right around 10% or so 10%. Yeah. So, and if you look today, this is something I want to, I want to point out. I talked about this last week about shooting stars and it's when a candle um comes up to like a new high and then reverses past its open so cl is actually doing that today while oils like exxon dvn are green so this could be a tell if you did have an exxon position or a dvn or some type of oil stock or um, a refinery stock this would be the day to probably book some profits because they usually follow suit like we've been saying uh to the, that futures uh, another hey, Tim, index oh, or sorry, Alex, um, if I can interject just, real quick. Yeah. I just wanted, uh, because you're on the topic and it's actually a really good point. Tim, could you pull up XOM on a, on an ATR chart just to kind of prove Alex's point here? This is mm -hmm. very extended. And if just something to keep in mind, if crude is starting to roll over, a lot of times crude is a precursor to what happens to the stocks, just like what Alex said. But, uh, yeah. I just, I pulled up XOM and I was like, damn, this is pretty crazy vertical move for a company like this. I think that just kind of sh shows some of the panic and the the swiftness of the rotation of money out of growth and into something like this. And you can see the way that chart looks, but sorry to interrupt, Alex. I, XOM, to no, no, you're, I think it's a, it's a good topic. Um, some of the other names that I'm watching that had been just behemoth, there's grinding their way up. Uh, if you could pull up Costco. Mm -hmm. This is at the this is at like a critical point, I think, because it's at the 50 day or basically the average true range right there. Is that below the one? Yeah, it's it's yeah, so, it's below the one. I'll pull up on a normal chart. So today it's if going these below start the one. to the if these start to crack, the Home Depots, the Costco's of the world, or even Apple coming down below the the 21 here. Hunter went over this last night in his video, brought up some good points. Make sure you check that out on. Uh, uh, our daily insight market videos every day we have and you can go to our youtube channel review your asset make sure you like share subscribe anyways um ah. yeah so apple home depot costco breaking below those averages those big stocks are institutional uh, sweethearts i guess you could say if those start to pull down then you'll start to see the indexes really have a tough time um remember corrections I won't say bear markets because we're not there yet, but corrections, if that do, if we do get a correction, they don't go straight down. You're going to have vicious bounces and it's going to look like things are okay. But here at Revere, we have a certain set of rules and if we break certain averages, at least we know where we can get in or we can get, you know, protect ourselves and put hedges on with our, uh, our SSO position. That's all we have right now long-wise is our, our large SSO position, which is a 60-40 um, investing style um, that Don has uh, us positioned with. So that's where we stand right now. All right. So I think I we still down. also have a little Lilium, don't we? Sorry? I think we also have a little Lilium, SSO and Lilium. I, I don't think I'm, that's true. Roger, what, what, is, what is he talking to about? <laughs> I don't think we have any Lilium. I'm looking... I, now, but I don't uh, think so. But I'll tell you what, Danny, do me a favor. All right, uh, Danny, I need you to do the normal short outro, not the long one that you're uh, prone to wanting to do. And then I've got one last thing. All right, folks, listen. Did we lose Danny? Like <laughs> I'm here. 
He's here. All right, let's do it. The, yep. Danny, the short outro. You already started doing the long outro. <laughs> do the short one. Jeez. Take us home, Danny. Every week. Folks, listen, if you but like what you heard. one last thing. Yes. Let me know when you're ready, Tim. <laughs> I just want you to do the short <laughs> one. That's all. I'm trying. I'm trying. Folks, listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend. Tell a neighbor. Just send them to revereasset.com. They can sign up for this daily uh, they can sign up and register in our email uh, to it subscribe and they just put their email in. We won't spam them or reach out to them in any way. Uh, they, and they'll get this, uh, our weekly podcast directly in their inbox and our daily market insight videos. And again, we won't, it's up to them to reach out to us. If they want a complimentary portfolio review. You can email any of us at Dan at revereasset.com, Tim Hunter, Don, or alex at revereasset.com. And you can always, always, always call us old school at 855 Real Wealth. All right, Daniel, one last thing here. That was a good job, by the way. Uh, let's Thank look you. here. Um, if you want to look at the, the true uh, health of uh, the market, like I, I, this is the RSP, this is an equal weight SP. And the SPs, uh, aren't aren't too bad here, and th this is why you don't hear me with fire and brimstone saying uh, short everything. The market's going to hell in a handbasket. If you take out, uh, like let's look at uh, SPY, which is not equal weighted. SPY looks terrible compared to equal weight. So there's some. It's the rotation that Hunter and Alex have been highlighting that the the, the stocks in the back end, not the heavily weighted top ten names. Uh, they're picking up the rear pretty strong. That's why you see this RSP. Although, although, now let's look at NQ, right? NQs are pretty bad. And now let's look at uh, yeah. QQEW. Uh, the QQEW is all the way down at the 200. So, whereas you look, we'll do this with the QQQ. The QQQ is not down at the 200. This goes exactly. I had a whole different one last thing, but because I would now substandard school that I believe Zach went to, but I was like, let me rework my whole one last thing based on what Hunter was just talking about, uh, about rotation. Look at the QQEW. I mean, look at the QQQ, not down at the 200 day. And that's, that's like, or it was Alex. I apologize, Alex. You're the one who was saying like, Hey, Apple's still holding mm -hmm. up the market. A Costco, I know, I know, not not in the bill there. Still kind of finding support. HD, um, but look at MSFT, Microsoft. It, it's not down at the two hundred. Uh, look at yeah. uh, Tesla. It's not down at the two hundred. If these stocks break, if these stocks break, you're going to see the QQQ exactly. sink, sink, just sink. And that's the what you'll hear a whoosh with it, absolutely. And it's going to look like what the QQEW. And well, if you, want to know I, you know what I forgot to talk about, industry. Tim, was that the 2018, oh, okay. 2018 could be, we've talked about this too in previous podcasts, could be the precedent because that was the potential rate hikes that they were going to do. And yep. the market went into a pretty nasty correction in late 2018. Um, yeah, December, yeah. Yeah, so yep. I, and, and it so, took a while too. Like it was a couple months of chop before it actually really finally came down. So I don't know. If that's the same scenario, but I like to use precedents in it, previous markets. And 2018 was most recent. It's so it hard. Sense. It's hard to think that the Qs will roll over before big big quarterly earnings. Mm. It's hard for me to think that that's what's going to happen. And in earnings start next week for banks, I believe. Then the third week of January, Netflix kicks off a week of earnings, and then before you know it, Bob's your uncle. You got the Facebooks, the Amazons. Uh, end of January, you'll see Apple start to report. But if you're like, well, where could the Qs, what, what's being signaled right now? If you see this QQEW break the 200 day, you'll most likely see the QQQ stretch down to the 200. And if that happens before earnings, it happens before earnings. Uh, but you'll see it though. It goes back to, you'll see this move set up on the weekly 21. If it breaks the weekly 21, this is the level you're probably heading down to. QQQ 363, and you're trading QQQ 380 right now. That's a pretty big move there for the old NASDAQ. Danny, take us home, man. Folks, we'll talk to you next week on Your Money. <laughs>